So we want to learn how to update the parameters of our neural network by minimizing the cost function. We know that the gradient tells us how we should be updating the parameters. However, there are a lot of parameters to calculate. Modern neural networks can have millions or billions of parameters, and we need a way to be able to efficiently calculate the gradient over all these parameters. But what comes in handy is that a neural network's outputs for a given layer become the inputs for the next layer. So that means the outputs of a layer of a neural network are actually functions of the parameters in the previous layer. So neural network layers function a bit like Russian dolls, where each layer's output is a function of the output of the previous layer, which is a function of the parameters of that layer, which is a function of the output of the previous layer, which is a function of the parameters of that layer, and so on. And here is where the chain rule of derivatives and gradients will come in handy. What the chain rule tells us is that we can calculate the derivative with respect to the values within nested functions using a multiplication chain. On the right hand side, I've got these different colored clouds, which represent functions that are functions of functions. This means the function is a function of a variable where the variable itself is also a function of another variable, and so on. I'll be using these clouds to show the chain rule, which is how we need to keep track of all the changes in a particular variable, and how that change in that variable changes the function that contains that variable, which then in turn changes the function that contains that function that contains that variable, and so on. We'll then be multiplying all these changes together, which is what the chain rule is. Let's see how this works. On the right is a cloud labeled f, containing a cloud labeled a, showing f as a function of a. And here, visually, are changes in a causing changes in f, which is the derivative of f with respect to a. Now imagine a is a function of b. If we want the derivative of f with respect to b, we can use the chain rule. When reading the chain rule, it helps to read from right to left. So let's read from right to left this equation. We'll take the derivative of a with respect to b and multiply this by the derivative of f with respect to a. Visually, what this looks like is we calculate how changes in b affect changes in a. Then we calculate how these changes in a affect changes in f. And then we multiply all these values together. Now let's imagine b is a function of c. And if we want to calculate the derivative of f with respect to c, we can apply the chain rule. Remember to read from right to left. So first we calculate the derivative of b with respect to c. Then we calculate the derivative of a with respect to b. And then we calculate the derivative of f with respect to a and multiply them all together. Visually, this means we're calculating how changes in C cause changes in B, and how those changes in B cause changes in A, and how those changes in A cause changes in F. And then we're multiplying all these changes together. And that's the chain rule. Using the chain rule, we can have an efficient way to calculate gradients for the parameters of our neural network. Let's see how this works for our example neural network that has two hidden layers and an output layer. We want to minimize the cost by calculating the gradient of the cost with respect to the weights and biases of all the neurons in the network. And remember, the cost could be the average of squared errors, which are the actual values of the data minus the predicted values of our model. Here, I'm just going to show the sum instead of the average so it's easier to read but it's the same idea. The output of our neural network is a function of the weights and biases of all the neurons in the output layer. So we can write the cost as a function of the weights and biases of the output layer like this. To calculate the derivative of the cost with respect to all the weights and biases of the output layer, we use the chain rule. First, we calculate the derivative of the cost with respect to the output and then the derivative of the output with respect to the weights and biases in the output layer.
and then multiply these together. I won't go into the math, but I'd like you to take my word for it that the formulas for these individual derivatives, which is the derivative of the cost with respect to the output, and the derivative of the output with respect to weights and biases, are readily calculated. So we have the mathematical forms for these values. So we can calculate these values of derivatives for the current values of our weights and biases and multiply them together. And now we have the gradient with respect to the weights and biases of our output layer. Next, we want to calculate how our cost function changes. And now we can write the cost as a function of the final output from the output layer, which is a function of the weights and biases of the neurons in the second hidden layer. To calculate the derivative of the cost with respect to the weights and biases in the second layer, we can apply the chain rule. Reading from right to left again, we calculate how the output of the hidden layer 2 changes with respect to its own weight and biases, which is shown here as d output h2 over d wb h2. Next, we calculate how our final output, which is the output of our output layer neurons, changes with respect to changing the output of the second layer, which is the d output of the output layer divided by d output of hidden layer 2. And then we calculate how the cost function changes with respect to changes in the output layer's output, which is d cost over d output of the output layer. We multiply all these together, and this is how we get the values for how the cost changes with respect to the weights and biases of hidden layer 2. Finally, we want to calculate the derivative of the cost with respect to the weights and biases in the first hidden layer. Again, we can use the chain rule and expand the output, which is a function of the output of the second hidden layer, and the output of the second layer is a function of the output of the first hidden layer. Now, to calculate the derivative of the cost with respect to the weights and biases of the first hidden layer, we read from right to left again. We calculate the derivative of the output of hidden layer 1 with respect to its own weights and biases, d output h1 over d wb h1. We multiply this by how the output of hidden layer 2 changes with changes to the output of hidden layer 1, d output h2 over d output h1. And then we multiply this by how the final output, which is the output of the output layer, and how that changes with respect to changes in the output of hidden layer 2, which is d output o over d output h2. And multiply this with how the cost changes with respect to changes to the output of the output layer, which is d cost over d output o. And this process repeats as we add more and more layers. Because we're calculating these gradients for the output layer first, and then going backwards through each hidden layer, starting with the highest hidden layer and going backwards to the first hidden layer to calculate how parameters in each layer affect the errors, this process of applying the chain rule for neural networks in this backwards manner is called backpropagation. So now we've seen how we can calculate the derivatives for all the weights and biases for the entire network, which means we know how we should update all of these weights and biases so that the cost function decreases. Notice that there is a repetition in our calculations. Certain values for the derivatives used in one layer are needed again when calculating the derivatives for the next layer. This allows us to be efficient with our computation and to store these values for use later so we don't have to recompute them each time. This application of the chain rule is the essence of the backpropagation algorithm, which is the algorithm that neural networks use to learn, and how neural networks implement gradient descent learning.